So when we talk about charts, so charts are graphical representations so of a spreadsheet data. So we have different types of charts. Uh, we have pie charts, bar charts, and other Excel charts that we have. So when we talk about chart, just understand, let's understand the various uh, parts of a chart. So this is known as the plot area. So always remember plot area and chart area. So this white part is actually the chart area. And this red, red marked part, this part number one, is known as plot area. This is known as category axis. This is the horizontal axis where we have all the categories. So this is known as category axis. And then this is known as value axis. So whatever you want in, in your category, let's say you want to display uh, some data related to cities. So let's say population of cities, city-wise population. So cities should come here and population should come here. So this is the value and this is the uh, horizontal axis, the category axis. This is the chart title. These are grid lines. So a chart may have uh, minor grid lines or major grid lines. So based on the requirement, they, they, it, it may so happen that you don't uh, put any grid lines also for a particular chart. So it, it, it comes in a white background. So we'll see how to make charts today. So just to give you an overview of the difference. So when I say uh, refer to the chart title, you should be aware of what is chart title. When I say refer to category, so you should know what is category or value axis. This is known as a data series. So right now, the object that is highlighted here is known as a data series. And these are known as legend. Okay, so legend of your chart. So we can also place these legends anywhere in our chart. And we can also change the colors we can do some formatting. So these all things we will learn today. For your information, Excel offers almost around 11 types of charts, which includes column charts, bar charts, line charts, pie charts, XY charts, scatter chart, radar chart, and so on. So let's see what are the different types of charts so that whenever we are doing an exercise and whenever we are uh, working on a particular file, you should be aware of what are the different types of charts that are available. So you can definitely um, explore with all these charts whenever you have free time, whenever you have time, and whenever you wish to practice these modules. So these are some of the very important chart types, bar, column, bubble chart also we use. This is a column chart. So whenever you are creating a chart, the default chart that is prepared by Excel is a column chart. Donut chart, we'll see that. Line chart is also a very common chart. Pie chart, we'll see all these different types of charts in our data. And this is a box plot chart or stock chart we call. This is used for uh, statistical analysis. Surface chart. Scatter chart uh, is something that we will try to explore uh, to do some kind of analysis. Now, this is how we uh, create a chart. So we will do one thing. We will directly go to one of our um, data set and then we'll see how to create a chart. We'll take a sample data. Um, we had, we have already worked on this sales data. Last time we were working on this sales data. So these all things we have uh, understood. So today what we are going to do, we'll just uh, try to make a chart 
based on some data. Let's say what I want, I want to make a chart based on item and uh, based on the quantity of item. It's a very simple chart maybe. So what we usually do, we select the data and if the data is already in a format where you can design a chart, then you can directly do so. Otherwise, if your data is in this raw format, so understand the difference between the raw format data and the process data. See, this is a process data wherein we already have grouped our data like this. So, let's say I already have quantity and sales. What I can do? I can maybe take it in a different sheet and I'll show you how to make a chart and what are the different types of charts we can make. See, I have just pasted my data. That's a consolidated data that we say. So item wise quantity and sales. Now if I want to make a chart, the first thing that I do is highlighting the data. Now this becomes my sales. So I may remove the sum part of it and quantity. So this is my sales and quantity. I can format this. I can put a nice border around and I can highlight this part like this as a heading and then I proceed for a chart. So I highlight the, the first thing that we need to do is to highlight your data and then, okay. Now, what we are discussing is we have a data like this was the data from which I prepared a pivot. Pivot we have already discussed in last class. If you want me to repeat, I can do that well, that as well. So let's say this is my data and then what I do, I have an option in insert through which I can create a pivot. So right now, this is the data that we have been already working with. So the same data I have taken. Uh, my intention is to show you what is a chart and what are the different components of a chart and how to make a uh, different secondary axis for a chart. So let's try it once again. Try from scratch. This is the data. You first go to pivot table and then you can mention uh, the range of this table. And then you can say that I want my pivot in a new sheet. So what happens? A new sheet comes and then what you can do? You can we have already discussed this how to take in classic view so that we can drag and drop our data and then what I can do? I can just drag my data. So this part comes and I want sales to be displayed. So sales is coming and I also wanted the quantity to come. So quantity is also coming. Is it clear till this part? How do we create a pivot table out of a data? So this is the way how we created our pivot chart, uh, pivot table and then we came to this part. So what we did, first of all we wanted to make a simple chart, not a pivot chart. That's why I just copy pasted that data as values in a new sheet. And then I start with my chart. To start with a chart, you have to first select your data. Now understand that this particular part becomes your category 
means the x axis. We told that there are two axes for a chart. One is the x axis, the horizontal axis, another one is the vertical axis, y axis. So our category or the values, uh, sorry, the heading should come always in x axis and my values should come in my y axis. A chart should always have a x and a y axis. So that's what I select a data and then I go for chart. How do I go for chart? You can just say insert and then you see different types of charts are there. You can select any one of the charts but in our case to explain how a secondary axis works we we'll first try with this column chart and that too with a simple chart. So column chart comes, a simple column chart. Then we say what are the different sections of this chart. So we understood that this is the chart title, this is the value axis and this is the category axis. Now so far so good because only I have one axis which is total sales which I have only one range of data which is total sales and this is absolutely working fine. Now problem will come when we try to incorporate the second range of data. Why? Just understand one thing. We have data in terms of 1 lakh, 1 lakh 60,000 and here we have data in the range of thousands. So when we try to put lakhs and hundreds or thousands in the single chart, it will have issues. How it will have issues? Because since we have only one value or one category or one um, axis, that's why what will happen, it will, Excel will always try to create an axis based on the top value, the highest value. Now, what I what we see that for this particular chart, we wanted to incorporate this quantity as well. So listen to me very carefully and see how I can introduce a new axis to a chart. So this chart is prepared already and my boss or my uh, manager says that I want to include a new data into this chart. So don't go for deleting this chart and creating it all over again. What you can do, you can always right click, this is a chart area, right click on the chart area, not the plot area. Right click on chart area and go to select data. The moment you go to select data, what happens is that you see that one, the chart uh, series that you had selected for total sales is already highlighted. But my objective is to add this quantity also. So what I will do, I will go to add. The moment I go to add, the first thing it asks is what is the name of the series that you want to give. So right now the series that I had was for total sales. I want to include another series. So the series name should be quantity. And then what I need to do? I need to highlight the data also. Now the problem with the data is that see in values you see something called equal to 1 and this braces. So this is the default value that Excel gives for a series. Please remove this before you select your range. Your range is what? From this portion to this portion. So you make sure that you have highlighted or you have clicked on the series part and then you select your data. That's it. So this means that my chart will always refer to this data itself. So that's why we have an Excel by default takes it as an absolute reference. Absolute means both my row and column will have a dollar sign in before and uh, preceding to it. So that's an absolute reference, absolutely right. And then we say OK. And here we don't need to do anything and then we say OK. So we see that the chart has come. But I don't see any major changes in this chart. However, if you notice carefully, you will see that a red 
mark has come at the bottom. Now what is this red mark? This red mark is actually nothing but the quantity. Since the quantity is in the range of hundreds and thousands, that's why it is coming like this. Because I have data till 16,000, 18,000, 17,000. So compared to 18,000, 1,000 is a negligible amount. So in terms of lakhs, we have data and here we have in terms of thousands. So let's see how to convert this. So what is the solution here? Solution would be to convert or transfer this red means the second series into a different series altogether. So which means that for the first series, I will look here. For the second series, I should look here. So how will I do that? I have to first click on this red, red part. But it is very difficult to click on this red part. Then how do I select that? There is a quick trick to select this small area. How do we do that? You click on the chart area, click on the chart area and then use your arrow keys, up arrow and down arrow. The moment you click your down arrow, it highlights that particular range. And then you are free to select the series for this. Very carefully you have to right click while it is already selected and then go to format data series. The moment you go to format data series, you will see this on the right hand side of your screen. And you will find an option called primary and secondary axis. What you need to do, since it was for the new series, you just say secondary series, you select secondary series and come back to the chart. Now what has happened, we, we have got two series, but the data is not visible properly. What has happened, this blue part is now hidden behind the red part. So the earlier blue color has now turned into maroon color and the new series has been given the color of blue. So this is what has happened. So I need to change it. So what you need to do, you select the secondary axis which was your new series that you had created. So the moment you click on this blue part, you will see all the blue parts, the hidden parts are selected. Now what you do, you just click on change chart type. The moment you say change chart type, you will see different options are there. Column, line, column, clustered, line, line on secondary axis, like this. So select this option, line on secondary axis and then say OK. The moment you do so, what happens? Your primary axis is again converted back into blue color and the secondary axis has been now converted into red color but with a different chart type. The chart type is now line instead of column. So this, for this line chart, your axis is here and for the column chart, your axis is here. So this is how in a single chart you can show two different axes. One is the primary axis and another one is the secondary axis. So let's proceed with uh, the other uh, things. So whenever we are creating a chart, we have two options actually. Either to put this chart on the same sheet or we can put this, take this chart into a new sheet. So not to worry if you have by mistake, let's say created a chart in a, a existing sheet sheet or and you wanted to take it to a new sheet, you can always right click and then you can move your chart. So the, the moment you say move your chart and you want it uh, in a 
to be placed as a new sheet. So what you can do, you can just uh, name this something, let's say dual series chart, something like this and say okay. The moment you do so, it comes to a new sheet altogether. Now you have different uh, other options. You can change the colors of the series and or you can give some monochromatic colors also and make them colorful and even if you can change the background of uh, like put some different uh, styles, some designs here, different designs are there, you can put them and we can also try giving, uh, let's, let's explore the different parts of this chart now. The first part would be your chart title. So, chart title, if you want to give above chart, it is possible. So, this is let's say sales data chart, let's say we have prepared like this sales data chart. We can give the heading and also what we can do, we can go to design and then we can add something called legends. So these are known as legends of chart. See total sales and quantity. So total sales is marked in blue color, quantity is marked in red, red color. So this is what a legend means. So these are the different types of uh, or different sections of a chart. You can always uh, name the X and Y axis also. Let's say the horizontal axis. You can put a name here. And also we can give secondary axis title also. And also what we can do, we can secondary or primary vertical axis also. So this is how we can provide the different, this is how we can make changes also like this. So these are just uh, like how so with whatever format you like you can do that. Let's say this becomes my city. So what I can do, I can remove this and write city here, sorry not city, this is my item, item. So like this we can create a chart. Let's come back to the presentation and see how there are the things that are already discussed. So how to create a chart, these are the different types of charts, how to put a chart title, what are legions, so these are how to color your um, chart, so these all things we saw, how to change the color, so these are the different ways we can enhance the chart formatting options. So these are the different designs we can create using charts. We can also save our chart so that we can use it at a later stage. So let's move on to another example of how to create a dual series chart and here I will talk about an analysis. 
how to make an analysis with this data. So, see here, we have a data which is uh, which says that the different types of errors that occurs in website. Now, I want to do some analysis on this data. So, analysis in the sense like I want to see what are the major errors that are causing the issues. Okay. So, let's do that. We know how to uh, create a chart for this data, but what we are going to do is we are going to create a different type of chart um, in Excel using dual series, like dual series concept. So, let's see. First of all, what we need to do to create a chart, we have to sort the data. Let's sort the data first. That gives a very good image of the chart. So, how do we sort? We just say data sort. You click on data and say sort. And then I want to sort it according to the count and say largest to smallest and say OK. Simple. Like we have sorted this data. Now, what we want, we want to create a chart. So, how do we do that? We highlight the area. We highlight the area of the chart. And then we say insert. The moment we say insert and the moment we go to column and say like this, your chart is prepared. Let's say this is a sample chart. So once you do it in a um, increase, decreasing order, it looks nice. It gives a very good view of the chart. Now what I want, I want to see a cumulative uh, figure of this. How do I prepare cumulative? Understand this part now. What you do? You just say cumulative, uh, create a heading called cumulative, let's say. And then, how do you make cumulative? Cumulative is nothing but the addition of this. This is the addition of this is known as cumulative. Now, every time I have to add. Now, if I, if I want to see the cumulative of this, so this becomes this plus this. If I want to see the cumulative up till this, so the answer becomes till this much. So this is how we check the cumulative. Now, for the first data point, we don't have anything up. So this becomes my cumulative data for the first cell. However, for the second cell, we need to do what? We need to take this plus this. So this too, this plus this becomes my cumulative. So how do we do that? We say equal to this plus this and say enter. So we get a cumulative value. So the cumulative value is for this and this. Now what we can do, we can copy this formula down like this. So we see that there are in total 1392 errors. So that we get in a cumulative value. Now let me add some challenge to this particular chart. I don't want to show only the cumulative values, but I want to show it as a percentage. What I mean to say that how much is 307 of 1392? How much percentage is 307 of 1392? So this is how we can create the cumulative percentage. See how do we do that? We just say C percentage, let's say. Any column, C percentage, like this. And then, see how do we do that? We say equal to and 
this value divided by this value. Now there is a question. I want all these numbers to be divided one by one with the same number itself. Then how should I modify? How should I modify this formula? The cumulative percentage of all these values in the subsequent column, but all of them should be divided by this. Okay, fine, absolutely, we will be using mixed reference. So for this D3, we won't be using any reference. However, I want that all of them should be divided by the same value. So I will be using absolute reference for D7 and relative reference for D3. Okay, or better to say, we will use mixed reference for D3 and absolute reference for D17, this one. We are going to use mixed reference for this and we say enter. The moment we do so, we get a percentage value, or sorry, we get a point value. We need to convert this into percentage. So the, it's very simple. We need not go to right click and format. We can just click here, this percentage and the percentage comes. Now see what happens when I drag this formula down. When I drag it, see what happens. You take any one of this, see, it is divided by this, this and this. So all my values will be divided by this. So what I mean to say that 349, if you take the cumulative percentage, so 349 is 25% of 1392. Similarly, 1177 is 85% of 1392. So this is how I was able to create or I was able to bring out the percentages. Now the second step. This time I am not going to make any chart out of this values. I want to chart, I want a chart out of the percentage. So this time my complexity increases. I want a dual series chart, but that particular chart should have values in primary axis and percentage in secondary axis. Let's see how do we do that. The first step remains the same. We right click on the chart area and then we go to select data. This part remains the same and then we go to add. This part also remains the same and here the series name I have given it as C percent, okay, let it be and the value should be this percent and we say okay and we say okay. Now you can see the same problem has arrived here. We have some values on the left hand side and if we notice carefully we have some red dots which signifies the percentage because the percentage is below 1 so whenever we say percentage is always less than 1 so that's why it is coming at the bottom this is touching the baseline now this is not the way how we show a chart so what is the exact way we need to take this red part into secondary axis. So how do we do that? We know we just click on the chart area, the white area and just click or just press the down arrow key once. The moment you press down arrow key once, see your cumulative is highlighted and then your, you can right click on red color and then say format data series. The moment you go to format data series, you can see here primary and secondary options. You click on secondary option, secondary axis and you get a chart like this. 
So again the same issue, we have got the blue bars for the primary axis and red bars for the secondary axis, but somehow those both of them are getting merged or it are, both of them are not visible properly. So what shall I do? Let's keep the primary axis in column form itself. We will change this red part into a line chart. How do we do that? Why this red part or the secondary axis is already highlighted? Go to design and then go to change chart type and then change it to line like this and say ok. The moment you do so, see your chart has changed. So it has given me the primary axis which is of values and secondary axis of percentage, primary and secondary axis. So these both are there. So in one axis we have data in terms of numbers and in another axis we have data in terms of percentage. Now this is actually a analysis, uh, a type of data analysis using Excel. I am going to give it a chart title. This is actually known as Pareto analysis. This is a type of data analysis using Excel. This is known as Pareto analysis. Pareto analysis says that 80% uh, of the problem occurs due to 20% of the items or 20% of the thing. Or you can say like this also, uh, in a country 80% of the population stays or lives in 20% of the area. So this is how to show that particular analysis. This is a method of showing that. Now how do we find out that 80-20? Right now you can see that there is a 80% mark here. So we can draw an imaginary line and see that 80% is coming somewhat here. When both of them are touching each other. So 80% is coming somewhat here. Now how do I, let's say if in some charts you might have seen a trend line like this, a small green dotted lines or a blue line, trend line kind of thing to show that this is the base or the trend. How do we do that for our own chart? Let's try that. It's very interesting. What do you need to do? Just put something called target here and just say, you just say 80 percent. 80 percent is my target, so I write 80 percent all around. So what will happen if I add a chart, if I add a new chart, it should give me a straight line kind of thing because all the values are same. Since here all the values are different, it is giving me a different chart. A trend chart kind of thing. If I have similar values, it should give me a straight line. So how do we do that? So we right click and go to select data and then two series are already there. Let's try to add a new series. Give the name as target and then remove this, I told you and then select this and say ok and say ok. See the moment you do so, Excel automatically creates the trend line for you. Now it's up to you, you want it as a solid line or you want it as a dotted line. If you want it as a dotted line, you can go to format and then you can go to shape outline and then go to dashes and select like this. If you want to change the color, you can always do so by changing 
any of these colors something like this see it is a colorful chart now and you can see that 80 percent touches here. So, in other words these four these four errors are the actual problem creators what you can say. So, 80 percent of the issues are caused due to this 20 percent errors or 20 percent of the errors. So, this is how to make a, a, a create a Pareto analysis. This is the type of data analysis that we can do using Excel. We will save this file. So, we have done Pareto analysis for a sample data and the process we learned how to make dual series chart and we also learned uh, we also saw what are the different types of formats. So, this is a design you can put these are different types of designs available. If you click on the drop down you will see different types of designs are there like this. So, you can always convert your chart into a colorful chart using your designs and again we can format them back like this, like this, like this, like this. So, see we have created a wonderful Pareto chart out of the data. So, these are the different types of uh, parts of charts. Now, apart from charts, see these charts are, these charts may be created in a single place or as a big, uh, it takes a space actually, what I mean to say. So, it, you can take it into a new chart sheet or you can put it into your new old uh, original sheet also, but it will take some space. But Excel also provides you a way of creating charts within a cell. We will try to see the concept of spark lines here once again because very small data. Let us say I have some cities and I have some months let us say and I need to fill some data, random data I will fill. So, I fill some random data. I copy paste the values to remove the formula and this is a random data that I created. Now, in this particular location, let us say this is my data, I have created a border and here I want to see let us say this is uh, some sales figures and city wise sales figures for some company let us say. So, I want to see the trend fine. So, I will mention it as trend and I want to see the trend here. So, let us do one thing. like this I create some space and what I can do I can put it like this here I want to see the trend. Now, to create a trend line we can always create a chart that is one thing that we have already seen, but I, I want a chart to be presented here in a cell. So, in that case what we can do we can create something called a spark line. So, Excel gives me an option to insert spark lines also. So, what is a spark line? A spark line is a type of chart which is a mini chart you can say which can fit into a cell. So, how do we do that? We have already seen this in our last session just to uh, revise it and take it in a uh, work for a small set of data so that you will understand how it works and then you just say range data range. 
and then location is already there. So you can see that I have created a data range and my location is there. So automatically it creates a trend line. Now what I can do, I can copy that trend line down and see this is how my data looks like. This is how my data looks like. So in a very small area, what I have done, I have created a mini chart. So this is how it is created. These are known as park lines. So you see that these park lines are always appearing as a group. So the moment you click one, it clicks the, it selects the entire park line. We also have options to change the color of the spark lines. Fine. And also to change the type of spark line. Fine. That is always possible. Different types of spark lines are there. You can see them. So bar or line. So like this, we can change the color, whatever we want. So like this. So this is a way how to introduce chart line, spark line. So spark lines, there are three types of spark lines, line, column, will loss. So these are three types of spark lines. We saw how to create a spark line that was there. How do we introduce a spark line? We have seen this part. Okay. Now, let's introduce the concept of keyboard charts and how to make dynamic charts using Excel. So let's see that. So keyboard charts are almost like your normal charts. However, you can uh, use the filters with the charts. This part we have already seen in, in Slicer, but we'll just review it once again so that you have a better understanding. So we'll do it just now. So we'll see how to make dynamic charts. We'll check all these things. Chart layouts we have already seen. Try to work with a pivot chart. We'll take our old sales data. We have this, this is a pivot let's say. Now I want to make a chart out of this pivot. See last time we had already done these charts. If you remember this month wise chart and quantity wise sales wise chart and we had already created this slicers in our last session. So these were all interactive charts. In last session itself, we had uh, discussed about dynamic charts, how to create slicers and how to make pivot charts dynamic. So um, the same thing, we'll just try to uh, revise one second with a simple uh, chart, simple pivot. So creating a chart is possible either through data or through pivots. So through data we have already seen how to create a chart. We also saw a dual axis chart. But in case of pivots, how do we do that? Let's see. You just need to select that, the pivot that you have made and then go to pivot tools and you will find an option here called pivot chart. The moment you click on pivot chart, it automatically creates a chart for you. You can say select that particular chart or there are other types of charts as well which we can see. Line charts or something like this. Different types of charts these are. Now when you click on OK, it creates a chart. Let's say this is a bar chart. Now how this becomes a dynamic chart just see here. 
all these items this this particular item the moment you select it you can uncheck some of the options or check some of the options and say okay your chart changes so this is what you mean by dynamic chart and this we have already explained why making the slicers so slicers were all same we will we can create dynamic charts using slicers we can clear off the filters like this so this this is the concept of dynamic chart actually